Hey friends, how's it going? Ash here with Jensen's. Hope you guys are doing well. So if you're really into fragrances, you're gonna have that issue that all of us have, that, that fragrance dude issue, which is you smell your fragrance probably more than you should, and you're into it a little bit more than you should be. So what I mean by that is you spray your fragrance on, and you wanna make sure that you really, you get all the nuances of the fragrance from the opening into the mid into the dry down. So wherever you sprayed, you keep huffing it throughout the day and it looks like you have issues. So you might be out at a restaurant, might be at a grocery store, might be at work, wherever. And uh, you catch yourself doing this deal right here. Maybe one of these. Maybe you sprayed it on your hand. But you end up doing that, getting that big whiff just so you can breathe in that fragrance once again. But some fragrances don't smell so nice up close. They smell better in the air. So while you're walking around doing your thing and people are moving around near you or you pass by somebody and they catch a whiff in the air, it smells way nicer. Because up close, some fragrances have a little extra funk, a little extra wang that makes them just not quite so nice. And today's fragrances, have a little bit of that. Some of them up close are a bit harsher. Some of them up close maybe smell completely fine, but in the air, they're just amplified up to 11 with how nice they smell. So with that verbose intro out of the way, let's jump into it. Let's check out some fragrances that smell great in the air, but up close, not quite as nice. Now the fragrance that I'm kicking things off with is actually the fragrance that gave me the idea to do this video because up close, it can be harsh, even chemically, very synthetic, potentially grating, especially in the opening. And yet in the air, almost everybody loves the way it smells. Whether you hate the brand or love the brand or hate the fragrance because of what it is or love the fragrance because of what it is, it is Club de Nuit Intense from Armoff. Club de Nuit Intense Man, technically. Now this is a Creed Aventus clone, and it's a really well-known one. I'm sure that the vast majority of you out there watching this know what this fragrance is or have smelled it. The opening here specifically can come across grating, synthetic, harsh, like a lemon pledge kind of cleaner to an extent. As it dries down, it gets a lot more pleasant, much smoother, richer, smokier, deeper, a little bit sweeter, but still yet up close, like right up on top of somebody that's wearing the fragrance or, you know, huffing it off your own arm or whatever. It still is not as nice as in the air. In the air, it's a certified compliment magnet. People love it. The projection is great. The performance is great. And because of that projection, you don't have to worry if people can smell you or not, because if they're nearby you, they probably can. So Club de Nuit Intense Man for sure smells better in the air. Now this next one doesn't smell bad up close, but it is one of those fragrances that has a good amount of a synthetic smelling sweetness. And I don't say that in a negative way. When I say synthetic sweetness, I don't mean automatically that that means it smells bad. I just mean when you smell it, it doesn't smell natural. It's Eros Eau de Parfum. In the air, this is a killer of a fragrance. When people smell this, oof, they're drawn to it. But right up close, it could potentially and you push them away a little bit instead of draw them in. Mint, apple, vanilla, and sandalwood. It's almost like the Goldilocks of Eros fragrances for me. Kind of splits that difference between the Parfum and the Eau de Toilette. Not quite as youthful as the EDT, but maybe a little more playful than the Parfum. As I said, up close, it doesn't smell bad, but in the air, it takes it up to another level. Now the next fragrance just has that possibility, that potential of being too strong, too overwhelming, especially for people that aren't used to or accustomed to higher end niche fragrances. It's the type of scent that up close, they, they could not dig it. They could be in for a bad time and just think, why did you waste money on that? You're a moron. The fragrance is Interlude Black Iris from Amouage. Now I love this period. Up close, far away, in the air, off some paper, sprayed into a car as a really high end, questionable car freshener. Yeah, it doesn't really matter wherever the fragrance is. I'm gonna smell it and I'm gonna like it. But this is interlude. 
Even though it's Black Iris, this is still interlude at its heart, which means that it packs a punch and it will still not be for everybody. Interlude Black Iris though, in the air better than up close. It helps take the edge off. In this one, they have a twistedlily.com. Again, friendly reminder that you hear all the time. If you ever shop there, gents10 is the code. Save yourself 10% off the whole website. Also guys, wanna make you aware, Joma Shop gave me a code. It is gents8. It'll save you $8 off any order over a hundred bucks. Joma Shop has been going hardcore with trying to grow the number of fragrances that they have. They're a discounter in case you're unaware of them. They don't just have fragrances though. They got a lot of stuff, watches and clothes and sunglasses and stuff, but they're getting a lot more fragrances in and the prices are actually pretty good. They hit me up via email, asked if I wanted a code to give to you guys, I said sure. So that's what it is. Gents eight, eight bucks off a hundred dollar order. Well, let's just go ahead and go into the next one that's also a darker style fragrance. It's Nui DC Polaris from Isimiyake. You gotta love, and by love, I mean hate, how hard it is to get these cooler weather Isimiyake fragrances sometimes. They make absolute bangers like Pulse of the Night or Noir Ombre, and then uh, they let you smell it. You know, a few people smell it. They let a few people buy it, and then they go, ah, cut production. But this is a great fragrance. Everybody wants it. Exactly, that's why we're not gonna make it. You would understand if you knew business, and I know business, so cut making those no more. Does Isimiyake actually know business? It's questionable. So this has vanilla, leather, oud, and cypress, and it is another Isimiyake cool weather hit. Quality is through the roof. You would think with the vanilla that's in here, maybe that would help offset that leather and oud and make it, um, more attainable for normal people to enjoy up close. But it's another one that I think is, is better suited for people that have a lot of fragrances or are really into fragrances. Otherwise, you probably don't want somebody getting right up on top of you if you've blasted that on a number of times. In the air though, like with Interlude Black Iris, it's gonna soften the edges a little bit and it's gonna smell rich, sophisticated, dark, mysterious, a little bit sexy potentially. Another dark one, the most wanted from Azaro. Now this one, I have more of a personal story with it as far as smelling better in the air. When I first got this in, and you can watch the first impressions if you want to, I thought it was nice, thought it was nice, but I did find it maybe a little redundant with some of the other fragrances from other brands that were coming out around the same time frame. So it was one of those deals where it's like, well, does it really stand apart enough? But when you're doing first impressions, like when you guys do them, if you go to a store or you get a sample or something or get a fragrance in for the first time and you spray it on and you're just given the old up close huff and puff, you don't get the full experience of the fragrance. And that's why you need to wear it more so you can really decide, does it work well for me or does it not? As I wore it more and I actually got out and about with the fragrance on and I could catch whiffs of it coming off myself, you know, where you're just going about your day and you catch a little whiff, you go, ooh, what is that? That's, that's the most wanted, yeah. That smells better than I remember. And then you start going around people and the people are picking it up in a more natural way instead of the whole deal that we've been talking about this whole video. And then you start to get some great feedback. You realize in the air, this stuff is like magic. Even if up close, it's maybe good, but not great. In the air, it's absolutely great. So that one, cardamom, toffee, amberwood, another fantastic cool weather scent that people love. All right, next up, Saharan Wind from Mansara. It's got the little magnetic cap. I love it. Look at that. <laughs> Spices, leather, wood, cypress, vanilla, tobacco, all those notes. Whoa, it sounds like the perfect fragrance. Unfortunately, it is not the perfect fragrance, but it is still a pretty good one. Admittedly though, it's one that smells better in the air. That's right, you crushed it. You're following along really well here. I'm proud of you. Up close, it has a little bit of a floral, semi potpourri sort of scent profile. It doesn't smell bad, but it doesn't smell great either. In the air though, the spices come out a little bit more and it becomes much more lovely smelling. Yeah, I was gonna go with something else, but <laughs> We'll just, we'll stick with that. Do I wish it came across more masculine that the leather and tobacco really pumped out? Yeah, I do. But it still is a solid offering from the house. Great bang for your buck as always with Mancera fragrances and in the air, it's a lot nicer than up close. So give it a chance. If you have a decant sample or bottle of that and you've smelled it up close and think, maybe not for me, in the air it's nicer. 
Let's switch it up and go with Artisan Blue next from John Varvatos. Love the packaging on these Artisan fragrances. The little weaves that they do, they look super cool. This one smells a bit similar to Mandarino Diamalfi from Tom Ford. Not quite the same quality as the Mandarino and also not quite as pleasant up close as the Tom Ford. This has bitter orange, it's got basil, so it's gonna have a little bit of that herbaceousness to it up close, um, kind of a green feeling, a green citrusy aquatic. Also has pine in there in the base, so the woodiness that you're gonna get here as well still has that green edge. Now, I myself am a big fan of green fragrances, always have been, makes sense because the first fragrance I ever got, period, ever, was Brute. Brute and then Dracar Noir, of course, after that. One thing I've realized though over the years is a lot of people do not like fragrances that are green or that have a prominent green facet to them. And that's where you'll run into some potential issues with this one up close. In the air though, a lot of that's mitigated, still a really great scent. Now this next one does smell awesome up close, but in the air, it is one of the best smelling designers that I've ever smelled. It is the one Eau de Parfum from Dolce & Gabbana. Amber, tobacco, ginger, and grapefruit, some of the notes in the fragrance, as I said, up close, it still smells good, really good. But this is one of those fragrances where when people catch it in the air, they will lean in and try to get more of it and just be like, what is that? What are you wearing? I would say of every fragrance that I own since I got that one, I've had more reactions like that wearing this than anything else. Part of that is because it doesn't project heavily. It's a, a fairly soft fragrance in the grand scheme of things. But when people do catch a whiff, it's one of those fragrances that will have them do a double take. Then we got a YSL. It is L'Homme Le Parfum. Again, when I smelled this initially, my first impressions were, who cares? Who cares about this? Amber Woody, a bit of citrus, cardamom, geranium, just kind of synthetically sweet and reminiscent of other things out there. Kind of like why Eau de Parfum snuck into Yves Saint Laurent Lhomme's bed and they had a tryst and then this came out nine months later. I'm saying it's like if they had a baby, those fragrances, like if they were. But that's the deal that actually makes this smell good in the air. It smells like those put together and both of those are huge people pleasers. So you go ahead and make a combo of that put it out there, people are gonna be gravitating toward it. And gravitate, they do. So it's not the type of fragrance that's gonna blow your socks off if you're looking for something highly original, innovative, and artistic. But if you just want people to think that you smell nice, that'll have you smell nice. Last up, another blue one, Century Blue from Dunhill. And look at that, it looks like the Tesseract or something. It's a big honking bottle. What's the size of this thing? Four and a half ounces, 135 milliliters. The cap is magnetic, but it's not really very good one because you can't get much of a grip on it because it's kind of smoothed over like a, a capped nipple or something. But you can give it a little twist and then it pops up. Up close, it's a fairly run-of-the-mill blue fragrance, maybe vaguely reminiscent of something like a uh, Versace Dylan Blue. But in the air, it does set itself apart a little bit and it smells a little higher end, a little nicer and with a touch of class. And part of that is going to be because it's got a bit of iris thrown in there to try to dial things up just a little bit. And the best part about this fragrance is that you can typically find it very cheap. And again, the size of it is a bit oversized compared to a normal bottle. So 135 milliliters for a very inexpensive price and an interesting bottle. It's a pretty solid pickup on the whole, if not earth shakingly amazing. And there we go, my friends. 10 fragrances that in the air smell much better than up close. A nice little mix. Some darker things, some lighter things, some fresher things, some sweeter things. As always, I'd like to thank you for hanging with me today. Thanks for all your support. Stay safe out there. I'll see you tomorrow with another fragrance video. See you guys later.